Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. WMAL. 8.37 on WMAL. While well, Washington comes to talk, Brian Wilson, Sherry Jacobus in for Larry O'Connor today. And on the line, the Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli. Mr. Attorney General, how are you? I'm just fine. How are you, Brian? Well, I got questions. I got lots and lots and lots of questions about... Uh, well, Something it, new for you. Well, I, you know, look, I, I just ask questions, and when I, when I ask these questions and I get the answers from people who were out there on Election Day working as poll workers, it raises a lot of concerns in my mind. Now, first of all, you have been asked to investigate this matter of uh, Pat Moran, the son of Jim Moran, who had to resign from his dad's campaign after some undercover reporter got him to talk about how you commit voter fraud on camera. Where is that investigation? I know you can't talk a great deal about it, but is it ongoing? It is ongoing at this point, um, and um, I don't think it'll take too much longer for us to reach a conclusion point. Um, but. Um, we're trying to trying to wrap that all up and working with a couple of agencies to do that. All right, so, now I, I get the uh, impression that, from that, reading your body language and some of the things you've said in the past that you don't think there's much of a case there. Well, that's not something I can say at this point. When the case is uh, resolved and over and done with, then then we can have more detailed discussions about um, about that. But uh, you know. The only reason people know there's an investigation going on is because we only are allowed to get involved when a public body, the State Board of Elections, has a public vote at a public meeting to ask us to investigate. It's not the usual way you deal with allegations of, of wrongdoing, um, but that's what it takes for us to have any authority uh, to enforce election law in Virginia. And one of our weaknesses is that this is all left and I don't mean this in a disparaging way at all, that it's all left to local law enforcement and local um, prosecutors who, candidly, you know, have rapes and murders to deal with. Well, okay, I get, so they, I get all so that. Get these things come across their desk and they go, ah, uh, you know, one guy cheated. You know, this, is this well, really worth my time? And we don't have any centralized... Uh, prosecutorial authority in Virginia over this. Well, Unlike you did get asked Sierra. to get into the into the air, the issue with Pat Moran, and I guess you know, look, the FBI got a, a, an inquiry about uh, something having to do with some harassing emails, and look what it turned into. Because once you open the door and you start looking, and stuff starts coming in over the transom, one thing leads to a new to another. I have, I bet, 150 emails we uh, that that where people said I saw the most amazing. I got one right here, Mr. Attorney General where it says that he was a poll watcher. Woman comes in, says she registered in Virginia in 2007, but did not vote. She goes to Michigan for college, registers and votes there. She comes back in 2010, but does not re-register. She shows up on Election Day, and they had a conversation with the Fairfax Registrar, and she was allowed to vote. I mean, and I, I, can't, I, got, I got another email, Mr. Attorney General, where we got somebody who says, I was a nurse in a nursing home, and these, these poor old folks who are basically, God bless them, vegetables, were being voted. The people who were voting were the nurses who were filling out the absentee ballots. When you hear these kinds of stories, one wonders, why isn't there a way for the Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia to get involved and to look into these matters? Well, Brian, I've said it for a long time. I think there ought to be a way. I think we ought to be able to initiate those investigations ourselves in conjunction with the state police or local law enforcement. But the General Assembly has not seen fit to allow for any statewide prosecutorial authority to exist to enforce election law. That's where we are, you know. And, and there's been so much discussion about voter ID in this election cycle, but there's three parts to this subject matter we're looking at. There's registration, there is voting, and identification, you know, are you the person whose name I have on the poll book in front of me, and there's enforcement. <clears throat> and frankly, it, people may not like to hear it, but the strongest part of that system in Virginia is voter ID. Registration, if you're willing to lie, anybody can walk in and register to vote. And it, you yeah, I'm Mickey Mouse. Put me on the rolls. Here's the address. Sure, I'm a citizen. And uh, it, it, it is so simple. 
and then you've got voter identification, and at least you've got to show something. Well, you know, um, a lot. A long... and, then, and then, and then you don't. Then you have no centralized. And I'm a conservative. Centralized isn't usually a good thing. But, mm -hmm. but when you cross jurisdictional lines like this, you've got to have somebody who's got authority to run an investigation. Now the state police do, but there's no prosecutorial authority that does, and they don't have the manpower to carry this sort of thing forward. And the state board of elections has no zero zero investigators to do checking into any of this. Well, there need there needs to be a way for people to be able to report the stuff and have it looked into. I mean, it, just across the country, we're hearing so many stories, and and people uh, can talk about it, but nothing seems to be done. And in fact, in the states where voter ID is required to photo vote, ID. photo ID, voter photo ID. Uh, Obama lost every one of those states. He can't win in a state where photo ID is required. So clearly there's something going on out there. And until there's a way to uh, have something done about it, where when you report it, you know it's going to be looked into, uh, the other side just says, oh, well, you know, this, well, look, you're just Jerry, poor losers look, look, and that sort of thing. Your tone suggests you're a little upset with me. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> no, we get we get I'm that. You. I'm, I'm with you completely. Well, I but I don't I don't understand how the Commonwealth of Virginia, first of all, can allow this to go. I mean, if there's one thing that's sacred in America, it's voter integrity. It's that when you when you go to cast your ballot, you are who you say you are, and that there's not a, a system that allows widespread fraud. And I'm telling you, reading these emails, you just get furious about what happened on Election Day in some precincts. I mean, you, you've been contacted by this woman, Dara Fox, who, who called us and started this whole thing. We put this out on the Internet, and we got like 20,000 hits. People, yeah. and, and, and you could not believe the email. Look, something went on in some precincts that wasn't copacetic. It wasn't, it wasn't right. It wasn't, and, and, and it, it, it's frustrating to hear you, the top law enforcement officer in the Commonwealth of Virginia, say, I'm sorry, my hands are tied. And, and they are. You know, I have to obey the law. It's kind of important for attorneys general. And um, so I can't go just opening an investigation out of authority to open. You, but uh, once you have one investigation, you can't widen it? Um, we can deal with things related to that investigation that we find, yes. We, but widen means factually widen, not subject matter. Okay, the State Board of Elections has, has invited us in to investigate this allegation. Therefore, we can go and wander the state looking for violations of election law. We do not have that authority. I do not have that authority. Real quick, Obamacare. I'm against it. <laughs> uh, but is there anything that's going to happen in Virginia as a result? Yeah, uh, you know, look, I, I, I'm particularly, I, I want your Maryland listeners particularly to hear this. In Virginia, Governor McDonnell has been leaning away from setting up a state health care exchange. I'm running for governor. There's no way on God's green earth that, that I can foresee uh, adequate changes coming at the federal level that would make it even worth considering to set up a state health care exchange. So I don't think we're going to do it in Virginia. So what does that mean for people in Maryland? Well, one of the aspects of this is that the way the law reads, and four of the Supreme Court justices in the health care case actually have already opined on this, um, that the businesses that were anticipated to be penalized two and $3,000 per employee who enter these exchanges only get hit with those penalties under the text of the law if your state government sets up a health care exchange. Maryland is charging ahead with this. The District of Columbia right. is charging ahead with this. In fact, they're looking at applying it to employers below 50 employees. If they both do that, and Virginia doesn't, and I think Virginia won't, unless uh, you know, unless the Democrat wins next year. But but um, if they do and we don't, we are going to go poach all of their businesses. There you go. And we're going to drag them right on over to Virginia. And the well, commercial vacancy rate in Northern Virginia in two years is going to plummet. <laughs> All right, listen, I got to leave it right there, Mr. Attorney General. I feel your pain. I share your frustration. Thanks for joining hey, us. Absolutely.